Yippee dooby. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a special video for you guys. Today I'm going to go through all of my PlayStation 2 games. This is my largest collection. I have... I haven't counted my PS2 games in a fair while, but to get a look at these, I have three and a half massive stacks. I can't even fit them all in the shot, but... Um, yeah, the PlayStation 2 is definitely my largest collection. It's the console I've been, I wouldn't really say collecting for, because um, to give a little preface, I've had this console since, I think, Christmas 2003. Um, so I've had it about 14 years, 13, 14 years, and this is the console that I've got the most playtime out of, out of any other console. This is the console that I would consider that I grew up with uh, being my go-to console, my main, I guess, my favorite console. It was really the only console I had for the longest time, or at least the only console that I played. And yeah, I, so I never really collected it when I was younger, but I just, over the years, accumulated a large amount of games, and I kind of now have this massive collection to look back on. I have a lot of memories with this console. I have you know, a lot of games that I cherish and I love and I'll remember forever. So today I'm going to go through all my games that I have in alphabetical order and I'm going to show you guys what I've got. So the first game is 50 Cent Bulletproof. I really enjoyed this game back in the day. I was really into the whole gangster rap music scene and G-Unit was one of my favorite uh, rap groups. My favorite uh, out of the group was Young Buck. I still listen to Young Buck today. So this game was pretty... Pretty good, it's actually a third person shooter, and although it doesn't look like it would be any good, it was actually pretty good. Some Australian exclusives, AFL Live 2004, this is an Australian rules football game, 2004. And I also have AFL Live 2005, Premiership. These games were better on the Xbox. Art of Fighting Anthology, it collects three of the Art of Fighting games. I have never played this. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. This is my favorite RPG on the system. It's a really, really good co-op game. Um, you go sort of through dungeons and it's kind of like an action adventure RPG. Three different characters to choose from, an elf, a dwarf, and a human from my memory. This is a pretty old game and I played it a long time ago with my cousin in co-op. I've also played it through multiple times since. There's a sequel on the PlayStation 2 which I don't have and I'm definitely interested in picking that one up. I played both this one and the first one. This is a definitely a really really good game. I'd highly recommend this one. Really cool monsters, really cool battle system. That's a really great game. Burnout Revenge. This is one of the few racing games that I owned. I enjoyed it. It kind of had a destruction system and I really enjoyed that. It's definitely more of a arcade-y sort of, well, I wouldn't say arcade, but it's definitely over the top compared to a realistic racing game. Colosseum Road to Freedom. This is a game where you play as a gladiator and fight your way up from slavery to earn your freedom. This is a game that's really, really good. It has a really, really good, um, you know, leveling system where you level up different attributes such as like your strength, your dexterity, stuff like that. You can get different loot, you fight uh, different gladiators, you can, I think you can go up in ranks. You can, there's different, there's a lot of different types of battles you can take on. There's team battles like five on five, there's like battles that are sort of like a handicap match which pitch like you against three people. There's duels one-on-one -on -one where you take on renowned gladiators. This is a really good game. There's a lot of different endings, a lot of different plot lines you can follow. I'd highly recommend this one. Conflict Desert Storm 2 back to bag dad. This is a really good co-op game. This is four player co-op. I Or you can play it two players there. You lead a squad of four people and if you're playing uh, just in single player, you can switch between any of the squad members at any time. Each of your squad members has different uh, different role in the group. For example, like one guy's like a sniper, one guy's like a demolitions guy, and I think it does vary from mission to mission. The first game is very good as well. 
This game I really enjoyed playing in co-op back when I was younger with a friend of mine. So I don't know if it'd still hold up. I haven't played this one in a long time, but I'd be interested in going back and checking this one out. I really have a lot of good memories with this game. Crash Bandicoot Twin Sanity. I never played this one. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. This is probably the least best of any of the Budokai games. In my opinion, it's still very, very good. Uh, it's just a Dragon Ball Z fighting game, a lot of great characters. The graphics are actually really good for the time. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2. I've never played this one. Draken Guard. This game is fairly uh, rare, I'm pretty sure. I saw it in a store for not a lot of money, so I had to pick it up. I've never played it. It looks very interesting. I'm not really sure what it is. And here's Dragon Guard 2. I bought it the same day. I thought that they might be like RPGs. They're definitely like some sort of Japanese game. I'm not sure if they're an RPG. They kind of look like it, but interested in checking it out. Dynasty Warriors 2. This is one of the earliest games that I ever played on my system. I didn't own it for a long time. I used to rent it from the rental store. And I used to rent it over and over again. Dynasty Warriors is one of my favorite series. It's just such an addicting combat system where one man can have the power of a thousand warriors and you... I don't know, I was just in love with the idea of taking your armies and fighting against different armies and like there's hundreds if not thousands of warriors fighting each other at once. You can play as, I think, something like 18 different warlords in this from three or more different um, factions. And Dynasty Warriors 2, as simplistic as it is compared to the games today, Dynasty Warriors 2, in my opinion, is still one of the, the best games in the series. It's just a classic for me. I have a lot of great memories with this. Even going back and playing this today, the music is really, really good. The graphics are actually pretty decent for an early PS1 game. This is a really, really early game on the system. And yeah, the levels are some of the best. So definitely check this one out if you're a fan of the series. Dynasty Warriors 3, this is the one that I probably sunk, either this one or number 5, I probably sunk the most amount of hours in. This one stepped it up again with over 40 playable characters, and there was two player co-op, which was a lot of fun. Split screen in this was just chaos. There's a lot of different, uh, you know, new maps. You can get new weapons in this one. This one introduced items. This one introduced different horses that you can equip before the stage and stuff like that. There's a lot of great uh, different collectibles you can get, like I say, the weapons and the items. This one's just a lot of fun if you're into hack and slash or, you know, if, you, if you're if you into like a co-op sort of game, definitely check this one out. Dynasty Warriors 3 is a lot of fun. Dynasty Warriors 3 Extreme Legends. This is the expansion, I guess you'd call it. It features new campaign I don't know if it features any more characters, but yeah, it features seven untold stories, uh, campaign things. It features new fifth weapons to power up your warriors even more. I think it features new difficulty modes. Uh, I think it has new items, new challenge maps, just an add-on to the original. Definitely worth having if you have Dynasty Warriors 3. Dynasty Warriors 4. I have not played a lot of this at all. I've probably only played like a few hours of this one. I don't know why, but I never owned this one until maybe three, three years ago. So I kind of got it pretty late. So I don't really have a lot to say. I'm sure it's very good. Dinosaur Warriors 4 Extreme Legends, the same as the original game. I haven't, excuse me, I haven't played it. Dinosaur Warriors 4 Empires. Those are the expansions. Dinosaur Warriors 5, this back when I played it was one of one of my favorite games. It probably was my favorite games. I sunk hours and hours and hours into this game, just in the campaign alone. This game has a lot of like uh, more engrossing features. Like when you play the campaign, there's full voice acting for uh, the the mission briefing, and you know before the you actually get into it, it kind of engages you more in what's happening in the actual world and how the war campaign's going and stuff like that. It's the same concept as all the other Dynasty Warriors games. You take on, you know, one general and you lead your armies through 
you know, countless battles with hundreds and thousands of enemies that you slay. There's different weapons, there's different power-ups. This game introduces the bodyguard system where you can have uh, some bodyguards coming along with you, either a unique warrior or you can have a set of like... Well, actually, I think the other one has bodyguards as well, but this one you can have like a unique warrior coming along with you to guard you. And you can actually upgrade your bodyguard, if I remember correctly. There's tons of different items, tons of different uh, weapons. Like I said, I, I would have sunk dozens of dozens, if not hundreds of hours into this one. And I didn't even scratch the surface of what you could unlock. So many characters, like nearly 50 playable characters, I think. A lot of uh, value for money in this, one, in this game. It is a little bit repeti repetitive, but in my opinion, this game... Or at least for me, it never really got old. I loved playing it in co-op. Yeah. Uh, the, one other thing to mention in this game is uh, the, you can have certain relationships on the battlefield. So, like, depending on how your character... The, the past events that have happened with certain characters, your character reacts to different characters in certain ways. Like, whenever you get near a certain warlord or a general, they're going to, you know, interact with them. But there's funny little uh, interactions and between certain characters that know each other. And if you kind of just run around looking for certain people, you can, uh, I guess, discover certain conversation. And it's really fun. Like, I just used to run around and kind of let the characters interact with people that they knew. And I just used to get a lot of fun out of that alone. So definitely a lot of depth to this game. Dynasty Warriors 5 Extreme Legends. This is the expansion. I think it adds, I guess, new weapons, new items, stuff like that. I've never actually played this game. Looks like a lot of fun though. Dynasty Warriors 5 Empires. This is the other expansion. Again, I've never played it. Enter the Matrix. This game used to be really, really cool. It's obviously based on the movies. I remember this game having a really, really good combat system. Sort of like a Kung Fu sort of combat system. You can play as either the male character or the female character. There's guns in this game. It's actually a really solid game, and I used to borrow this one from the rental store again. I'd I'd be interested in going back and checking this one out. I've I have a lot of memories with this one. ESPN International Track and Field. Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X 2. Some sealed copies of Final Fantasy X and X-2. A sealed copy of Final Fantasy XII. Genji. I bought this one. I think this was the last PS2 game I ever bought. I haven't bought PS2 games for over a year now, I think. I just kind of stopped playing the system, kind of stopped collecting for the system. But this one looks really interesting. It looks like something I'd be into. <laughs> I tried to say interested and into at the same time. It looked like something I'd be interested in. It has kind of a Chinese uh, historical mythology kind of feel to it. Kind of looks like Oni Musha or something from the back. Yeah, let me know if that one's any good. The Getaway. This game used to be kind of comparable to the Grand Theft Auto series, but it took on its it took on more of a gritty kind of realistic. Uh, British gangster sort of uh, vibe to it. There was a lot of pretty adult stuff in this game. There was torture scenes, there was kidnappings, there was extortion, uh, bribery, you know, stuff like that. You take on the, the role of, I think it's Mark Hamill. And let me tell you, the voice acting in this game is really, really good too. It's a really, really gritty take on kind of the uh, open world kind of sandbox, Grand Theft Auto style kind of world. It's kind of challenging. It's actually pretty damn challenging. I only beat this game not that long ago, like maybe four or five years ago. I could not beat it as a kid, let me tell you. It was, it was definitely an adult game. Uh, the driving is kind of a little bit whack, I guess, compared to Grand Theft Auto. But yeah, this game is definitely really, really cool. There's a lot of different gangs you take on. There's missions where you have people with you. There's missions when you're alone. You're taking on the triads, the Yakuza the Yardies, you know, um, definitely recommend this game if you're a fan of kind of gritty uh, English, I guess, gangster movies, or I guess more of a realistic kind of Grand Theft Auto game. The Getaway Black Monday, definitely not as good as the first one. You play 
I think, as a police officer or something like this. So you kind of take on the the other side of the spectrum. And this game is a very challenging game as well. It was kind of frustrating compared to the original game, in my opinion. Yeah, more of the same though, but in my opinion, not as good. God of War. This is one of the best games you can get on the PS2. It is... A Greek mythological game where you play as Kratos and you're going along trying to redeem... Are you trying to redeem yourself? No, I don't think you're trying to redeem yourself. I think you're trying to take revenge on the gods that betrayed you when you were trying to redeem yourself. So you're going along, you're fighting all kinds of mythological creatures, centaurs, cyclops, um, Cerberus, Gorgons, all these, you know, Hydras, all the, I, like the, the very first mission in this, I can't, I can never forget playing it. Um, you're, you're on a ship with all these kind of sailors or mercenaries or pirates or something. And everyone is just getting their butts kicked by all these demons and all these kind of flying bat things like harpies or something like that. And then these massive kind of serpent Hydras come out from the ocean and start attacking the ship and you single-handedly like fight them off. And that's basically the sets the tone for the rest of the game. This game is very violent, very brutal. It's a very, very adult game and highly, highly recommended. There's the power ups in this game are absolutely awesome. Like on the cover there, he's ripped the head off Medusa and he uses her freezing gaze to turn people to stone. He has flame swords that are chains attached, attached to his wrists. If you can't tell, this game is damn awesome. And I highly recommend it if you haven't checked it out already. Grand Theft Auto 3, a lot of great memories playing this one. There's not a lot that can't be said about the Grand Theft Auto games, it hasn't already been said, but I remember this was probably my first kind of adult video game that I ever played, doing missions for different gangs and earning money, doing whatever you could. Like you could, I remember you could be like a cab driver, an ambulance driver, or you can just like beat up people for money, or you can, you know, do missions, sell drugs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 definitely holds a lot of charm. It's one of the better Grand Theft Autos, even today. Grand Theft Auto 3 and Grand Theft Auto Vice City. This is the double pack. Comes in a little uh, cardboard sleeve, I guess, like a slip case that opens up. This is my original copy. I've had this copy for over 10 years, well over 10 years. It's a little bit beat up. There's Grand Theft Auto 3. Some cool artwork on there. And there's Grand Theft Auto Vice City. This is the only copy of Vice City I ever had, I think. Vice City, Vice City may just be my favorite Grand Theft Auto game. There was something about the whole 80s vibe to it that was just, just crazy. Like the music in this game is some of the best soundtrack music I've ever heard in any video game ever. This game pretty much alone got me into kind of hair metal, 80s metal, 80s, you know, glam rock, hard rock, stuff like that. Bands like Rat, Poison, Motley Crue. Um, but yeah, just the way they portrayed the kind of the, I guess, the like Miami Beach scene and stuff like that in this game was really, really well done. Yeah. The missions, the fashion, <laughs> the characters... So many different things, like, it's definitely one of the best games that was ever made, and there's a reason that people regard it so highly. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It's amazing how the Grand Theft Auto series has so accurately portrayed different cities and different points in time. This is, uh, well, if you haven't played Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, you should definitely check it out. This one brought so many new things to the series. You play as CJ an African-American gangster, and as you can imagine, this game incorporates a lot of kind of gangster rap and stuff like that into it, a lot of, uh, you know, ghetto kind of themes. You come from the ghetto, and you break out, and you end up kind of, you know, making millions, making something for yourself, but at the end of the day, it's still kind of brought back to where you came from, um, you know, the family and everything like that. Grove Street for life. <laughs> uh, but no, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was 
a really, really great game. This is one of my favorite games on the system. Did this game introduce motorbikes? No, no, Vice City introduced motorbikes. With this game, there's a ton of different... Oh, this game introduced flying. That's what this game introduced. There's planes or helicopters or something that you can get in this game and fly in. But yeah, there's a ton of different things that you can do in this game. And yeah, they, and bicycles as well. So many cool things. You can go to the gym in this game too. So definitely get in those gaming games. Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. This one originally came out on the PSP, if I'm correct. Um, this is kind of like a prequel to Grand Theft Auto 3. You play as Tony, Big Tony, Fat Tony. Tony Cipriani, I don't, I can't remember. I think I got it right in the end. But yeah, you play as Tony, and this game is really, really solid. Um, it introduced a little, little, uh, another, what am I trying to say? It introduced some other things, I guess, but... Yeah, the graphics are a little bit of a step down, hence it's a port from the PSP, but no, this game is definitely solid. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with this one. Guitar Hero 2, Guitar Hero 3, Legends of Rock, Guitar Hero Rock the 80s. I got this one for its soundtrack alone, but this is sealed. I don't own, I don't have any more a guitar to play these games on, so that one will probably stay sealed. Hitman 2. So the next game I'm about to show you is one of three of the very first games that I got on the PlayStation 2, and that game is Jack 2 Renegade. So this is the game I got with my console Christmas 2003. This game, I remember, before this I had played Grand Theft Auto, and this is kind of like, I guess, a all ages version of Grand Theft Auto. It's essentially the same. It's like an open world sandbox game. I never played the original Jack and Daxter, so this was my uh, introduction to the series. I was blown away with how good this game was. It is literally a more cartoony version of Grand Theft Auto, but it takes on its, this whole like cyberpunk almost sort of setting where you're going around and it's the same thing you're doing things for certain people like you're doing missions for certain mob bosses and your character jack is kind of really edgy and um he's always pissed off and stuff like that and he's actually infected by this uh what was it called i think it's called like dark eco or something like that and he can turn into this monster and he just tears people apart but yeah it's essentially the same sort of thing as grand theft auto you're going around and doing kind of missions, destroying things, capturing things, rescuing things. But let me tell you, this game is one of the best games on the PlayStation 2. Definitely check this one out. The characters are great. The missions are great. The guns are great too. You can get guns, uh, four different types of guns. Like you can get like all these different guns. You can upgrade them and put things on them. I don't know if I'm actually, I don't know if you can do that on this one or if it's that, that's the third one. I'm pretty sure it's this one as well. You can put different like scopes on them and stuff like that. It's really, really good. And also like to all age friendly. So definitely check that one out. A lot of great memories with that one. Kesson. This is a very unique game. Uh, what, do, what do you call this game? Like a, oh man, what would you call this? Like, uh, I'll try to describe it. You take on, it's the same, uh, it's the same kind of universe or setting. It's like a historical fantasy game with Oh, Nobunaga. So it's the same kind of thing as like Samurai Warriors or something like that. You're playing the Japanese uh, Samurai he history. I can't really remember what era, but there's all different types of Japanese warriors like Samurai, Assassins, Horsemen. I think Gunmen are introduced. And basically you can play either of two warring factions and you take over the whole army and you can send like different, you can set different troops of where, uh, like on the battlefield you want them to be and you can move each unit, uh, you know, individually. Like you can move like hundreds, if not thousands of troops individually and kind of like control the whole battle in that sense. And yeah, you just pit like massive armies against each other. You take control of the battlefield from like an overhead view. You can zoom in, I think, take control of certain generals on the field. And basically you're just trying to win certain battles. You can set up ambushes, different, different units have different abilities and you, the experience you gain in battle kind of levels up those characters, I think. I'll be honest, Kesson is definitely not as good as the sequels, but it's still worth playing. And yeah, there's some pretty cool moments in this game. This game, Kesson 2 is the one I want to talk about. This 
is based on the same uh, point in history, Chinese history, as the Dynasty Warriors uh, video games. It takes its own kind of thing. It's made by the same people who made the Dynasty Warriors video games, but just like the Kessen uh, 1, you take control of either of two factions being Shu or Wei, so Lu Bei or Cao Cao, or Cao Cao as he was known back then. And yeah, you take control of the whole army and you gain different generals. Before the battle starts, you can do different strategic moves, like you can have the farmers try to produce more, you know, rice or grain or something to feed the army so you can have higher morales or you can work on, you know, trying to uh, reinforce your troops by getting mercenaries or, you know, kind of sending out things of like soldiers to try and, you know, get into the army. You can try and work on different generals. You can try and recruit new generals. You can try and uh, do all these different options before the battle actually starts. And when the battle starts, you you have all the characters. And yeah, basically it's a, it's a mission of trying to basically kill the commander of each of the forces or do whatever the objective is on the battlefield. But yeah, there's all different really original, really unique uh, warlords. Just in like the Dynasty Warriors series, the same sort of people plus people put in from it takes on its own kind of twist i guess or maybe it's more uh, or maybe it stays truer to the romance of the three kingdoms uh books i'm not really sure but there's all different magicians you can use and they can send in giant kind of like thunderstorms or rock storms there's what depending on what units you have so there's like uh is it Zhang Fei or Zhang Fei's daughter has like an archer unit and you can send like volleys of arrows into the enemies as they run in. There's horsemen that you can do charges. All the generals have their own moves. Like they can, you know, just go out rogue and start killing everyone. You can take control of the generals individually or you can, you can look at the whole battlefield of armies. If you kind of, if you like like, uh, like, like games like Total War or something like massive war simulators where you can take control of just thousands of troops, definitely check out Kessen. Uh, two and three, I'd say more so two. I've never played the third one. The third one definitely looks cool, but more so check out Kesson 2. I think they're console exclusive. Don't quote me on that. Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy. This is again one of the earlier games I have. This is one of the best co-op games ever. Back when this came out, there wasn't a lot of Lego games out. In fact, Lego Star Wars might have been the first kind of uh, co-op sort of you know, adventure Lego games where you collect and you do all the missions and you try to get all the studs and red bricks and stuff like that. But now there's a, there's a million different Lego games now. There's like Lego Marvel or Lego The Avengers, Lego Batman, Lego Lord of the Rings, Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. There's a million different Lego games, but Lego Star Wars 2 was definitely one of the better ones back then. And it, it is still one of the better ones. If you're a Star Wars fan, check this game out. There's no voice acting, but even though there's no voice acting, it holds... It has a like an original sort of charm to it that's very unique and it's a very good way to relive the the stories I guess. Definitely a very co-op friendly game as I said playing this one in co-op is a hell of a lot of fun. I used to play it to death with my friends so there's that one. The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers. I got this game. Where's the price tag? I must have taken the price tag off but I got this game for two dollars from uh, EB Games, the equivalent to GameStop in the US. This is one of the older PlayStation 2 games, but it's still one of the best PlayStation 2 games. It's one of the best Lord of the Ring games in general. Just like on the co on the cover would suggest, you can play as either Legolas, Aragorn, or Gimli, and you go through all the missions of the first movie, The Fellowship of the Ring, and the second movie, The Two Towers. Even though it just says The Two Towers, it's actually the first and the second, uh, the events of the first and the second movie covered in this game and yeah this is a really really good game really solid i love the combat system i love the archery the the parry moves you can do like you can parry and then like execute them in one move there's tons of great different bosses definitely recommend this one and the sequel to that the lord of the rings the return of the king an even better variation of it this one covers all the events from the third movie this one introduces co-op and this is one of the best co-op games i know i keep saying that but this is one of the best co-op games on the playstation 2 that you can get i love this game it introduces you um all the different other characters you can play as gandalf you can play as any of the four hobbits you know there's 
Faramir in this game, there's... I can't remember who else is in this game, but there's a bunch of different characters you can play as, and every kind of... There's three different story modes you can follow. You can follow the Hobbit's journey, you know, going through Mordor and, and all the way to the, fire, the mountain of Mount Doom and uh, doing all that. You can follow Gandalf's story where he kind of goes to Minas Tirith and all those. Is it Minas Tirith? I think so. And he defends Minas Tirith from the invasion, um, you know, all through from... I think it starts at Helm's Deep. Or you can follow the journey of Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli, you know, where are they go through the, to Rohan and the they, they get the King of the Dead on their side. So there's a lot of depth in this game. And once you beat it, you can go through and play as any character in any different... Um, any different level, I'm pretty sure. So there's a lot of replayability. You can upgrade your characters and get different abilities and stuff like that. It's a really, really solid game. The Medal of Honor... Not the Medal of Honor, but Medal of Honor Frontline. Uh, this game is another one that I played back from the rental store. It used to, I never used to get past the first mission when you land on the beach and you kind of just, people are dying around you. And I remember that was like a really cool kind of scene in my, in my uh, experience with this game. Like just landing on the beach and running into kind of machine guns shooting down at you. It would have been pretty accurate to what actually happened in the wars, and um, no, this game is pretty damn solid for a first-person shoot. I have played this game all the way to the finish. There's not a lot you can say about it, but it's a pretty good game. Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Again, I've only played the first mission when you're on the submarines, I think, so there's not a lot I can say about that. Mortal Kombat Deception. This has a really, really cool single-player mode. Uh, there's a few different modes like chess combat, puzzle combat, but this is mostly about the fighting, uh, the one-on-one -on -one combat. Mortal Kombat's a really, really cool gaming series, and Deception is definitely a, one of the better games in the series. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, I've never played that. Mortal Kombat Armageddon, this has the largest cast of characters, or at least when it came out, it had the largest cast of characters. It had over 60 playable characters, every character that had been in the Mortal Kombat franchise, I'm fairly sure collected into this game. You can make your own character, which is new to the series. It has like arcade mode returns. The, it introduces, excuse me, two or three new characters in the story mode, some brothers. The story mode is pretty decent as well. I put a lot of time into that game, I'm trying to unlock everything in the crypt. There's a lot of like fan art and stuff like that you can unlock. So Onimusha Warlords. If you like Resident Evil type games, like the old school Resident Evil, where you have to use the D-pad to kind of turn your character and then move, this one has the same control scheme. And this is a mm, medieval Japanese mythological fantasy type game. It's very similar to, uh, yeah, as I say, Resident Evil in the controls and even... Uh, going through the game the combat as well. It's very difficult when you get swarmed by a lot of different enemies But this is a really really fun game. I thoroughly enjoyed playing this It has a really really unique storyline again a really really unique uh, combat system. I Definitely recommend Onimusha Onimusha 2 Samurai's Destiny. I've not played it Onimusha 3 I've not played it. Onimusha, Dawn of Dreams. I must go back and play all these sequels. I've never played any of them. EA Sports, NBA Live 2005. I used to have a lot of fun playing NBA in versus mode. Pimp My Ride. Probably one of the lesser fun games that I had. I used to like the TV series, so I bought the game. It had some fun moments, but overall, it's a pretty poor game. Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. This is one of my favorite games on the console. This game really introduced me to platforming. A lot of people, when they say, they think of platforming, they think of, uh, or at least how they got introduced to platforming games. The games like Mario, games like Sonic. This is really how I got introduced to platforming games. This is a game where you scale giant cities around around kind of like the Middle East, like Persia and stuff like that. You play as a, as an adolescent boy, 
His father is taken away from him. His whole kingdom, his whole race of people is destroyed in front of him. And he's the cause of it at the end of the day. So he's basically going on a mission of redemption. It also has elements of romance, elements of um, betrayal, all sorts of things going on in this game. Psychological elements, maybe. A little bit, I guess. This game is really, really solid. It's one of the most unique video games I've ever played. Obviously, it's based on the original Prince of Persia video game, which I've also played through to the end. Actually, that game's included on this game as a bonus when you beat the main game. You can unlock that. Tons of different traps, tons of different enemies, puzzles to get your head around. This game is really a solid game, and it's one of the best games of my childhood. And um, I played this through as an adult, so it definitely holds up today. This game is released on PS3 as well in HD, so I probably picked that one up with the trilogy, and the rest of the trilogy is Prince of Persia Warrior Within. This game is more of a kind of, hmm, it's more of a, I guess a brutal kind of, it's almost like God of War this game, like it still has the platforming, but you can actually dual wield in this game, there's a ton of different weapons you can get, and it just turns into a, a kill em up in this game really. This game is definitely very, very solid. I still prefer the original to this game, but this game, I like I like the different elements they brought in this game. This game also has multiple different endings you can do depending on what you do during the main game. Very, very good game. Highly recommend any of the Prince of Persia games. There's also the final game in the, in the trilogy, Prince of Persia, The Two Thrones. I believe I bought this game in a big box version as well. And I think I threw away the box. I'm not really sure what happened to that. I might be wrong. Anyway, this is one of the later games I got uh, as a kid with the system before I really started moving into the, you know, the next gen Xbox 360, PlayStation 3. This game is very, very solid. Ratchet Gladiator. Red Faction. Ricky Ponting International Cricket 2005. I had the big box version of this game and I also got it with the controller that came with it. I'm not sure what happened to that controller. I'm pretty sure I just threw away the box after I kind of opened it up and ripped it and wrecked it a little bit. But yeah, I had the controller that was like, had it was yellow and kind of green or it had like, I don't know, some cricket players on it or something. But yeah, this game I think is called Brian Lara. International cricket in Europe, but this is the Australian version. This is actually a really, really solid cricket game. I <laughs> probably wouldn't buy cricket games to be honest, but I played this at a friend's house, and this is actually a really, really good co-op game as well. Like if you play um, either batsman at the end of the crease, and uh, it's uh, between me and my friends, and even me and my dad, it created some arguments. Like let me tell you, like running out the other person, you can play against the computer. This has like a full campaign sort of mode, like the different tournaments you can play. One thing that's interesting about this game is, I don't know if they didn't get the license to all the, the cricket players, but all the names, uh, at least in like the exhibition mode, are all like spelt wrong, and the faces are kind of like morphed to make them like a tiny bit look like them, but not really resemble them at all. So I'm not sure if there was like a licensing issue with that or what the case was, but yeah, in the campaign, everyone looks like them and everyone kind of has the names, but yeah, it's really, really weird. Anyway, really solid. Uh, sports game Rise of Honor or Rise to Honor Rise to Honor Jet Li this game is very very fun it has Kung Fu martial arts sort of combat and back when I was when I bought this game I was very much into kind of Kung Fu movies especially movies with Jet Li Bruce Lee Jackie Chan stuff like that so this one if you're into stuff like that definitely check that one out Rocky Legends. This is the best video game that kind of betrays the whole Rocky franchise. It runs all the way from Rocky 1 to Rocky 5. It has a full campaign mode where you can play as either Rocky, uh, Clubber Lang, Ivan Drago, or Apollo Creed. It has all the different boxes, even like lesser mentioned boxes like Spider or uh, Spider Rico, I think it is, and you know, Tommy. Tommy Gunn, man, it's, it's, I haven't seen the movies for a fair while, but if you're into the movies, definitely check out Rocky Legends. The combat's actually really, really solid too. Really, really good boxing game. EA Sports Rugby 2004. I believe this was like the fourth or fifth video game I ever got on the console. So I put a lot of playtime into it, which is interesting because 
I'm not really a rugby fan at all. Like, <laughs> but for whatever reason, I really like this game. Hmm. I never played rugby. I never watched rugby, but I do like the game. So if you're into rugby, do they still make rugby games? I don't know. State of emergency. This game has to be the game that I borrowed most often from Civic Video than any other game. This game was chaos, I swear. This is one of the best arcade gangster video games you can get. You just go around doing different missions for different gangs, beating up rival gangs. You can get guns, you can get grenade launchers, you can get flamethrowers, you can get baseball bats, you can get freaking samurai swords, you can cut people's fucking heads off, you can do whatever you want in this game. This game was brutal. It was just insane. I remember searching for this game for so damn long and I finally found a copy in EB Games and I just picked it up straight away. It's one of the older games on the system, but definitely one of the funnest. I freaking love this game. So, so good. It's made by Rockstar as well, so you kind of know what to expect from that. Very fun game. The sequel, State of Emergency 2, it is not more of the same. It is different. Um, it tries to kind of retain some of the characters, I guess. Uh, it's not made by Rockstar, that's the thing. It's made by uh, South Peak Interactive, I guess. But yeah, it's definitely a different type of game. It's still fun, but it doesn't have the pure kind of chaos that the original one had. The original one, you kind of just, there was like not many levels. There was like four or five levels, but the game was huge. Like you just choose whatever level you want. Like a shopping mall was the first level. And you just run around and it's just absolute chaos. It's like everyone's running around trying to get away from each other, trying to bash each other, trying to steal shit. Like people are trying to steal TVs and stuff. And then it's just chaos. It's so good. The second game, I would not recommend it, uh, really, unless you're like a hardcore fan and you want to kind of play the sequel. I wanted to play the sequel more of the same, and I was I was pretty disappointed to be honest. It's it's still an alright game, but it's not it's nothing like the first one. SpongeBob SquarePants Red. Here is this. <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. This is one of the other games that I got. The Christmas of 2003 with my PlayStation 2 console. This is a platforming adventure game of Spongebob and I had a lot of fun with it. It no longer works, but yeah, I mean, I have fun memories with it. I, I should probably pick up another working copy just to see what it was like. Just for nostalgia, I guess, because it was one of the first games I ever got with the console. Spartan Total War. This is a spin-off to the Total War series where you take on more of like a, more of like, it's kind of like God of War this game. Still, you kind of have large, uh, large groups of enemies fighting other large groups of enemies, but it's more of a singular kind of experience. You play as one particular Spartan or one particular warrior and you kind of go through, it's kind of just like an action adventure game. Um, my friend actually had this game for the longest time and I never had, fucking burp and like fuck. I never had this game until like quite recently. I really enjoyed this game. I remember thinking it was very similar to God of War and because I loved God of War so much I played this game and it's kind of the same like it's a Greek historical game and I loved it back in the day. I don't know how well it would hold up now. I've actually seen footage and it didn't look the best I'll be honest but I'd be interested in checking this one out because from my memories of this game it's like it seemed like you took whole groups of kind of Spartans and warriors against creatures and other armies and barbarians and all these different things. And there's this mission where you defend the city. Is it like the city of Troy or something? I can't remember, but there's this massive invasion. You're trying to defend the city and there's freaking flaming catapults coming over the walls. And it sounds really good, but I just feel like I feel like it would have been because I was a kid that I really liked it. So anyway, the next gaming series is the SOCOM US Navy SEALs series. This series is one of the series that I played the most on the PS2. I love the SOCOM games. I never played these games online, but I just played them in the campaign mode and I love taking my squad through. I guess you can really say that this is one of the original stealth, uh, one of the first stealth video games I ever played. Nowadays, stealth video games are one of my favorite genres. Any game that incorporates stealth elements, I absolutely love. 
And I love SOCOM back in the day. It was very challenging. It was... It was not like... Like, I was used to playing games like Goldeneye, where you kind of just run in and kind of shoot everyone. But this game, you really had to plan what you were doing. You had to strategize, and you had to use tactics to take down the enemy. A lot of the times, there was hostages that you had to... Uh, it was important that you didn't let the enemy know that you knew... Well, that, the, that you were there, and you were trying to infiltrate the bases. You had, like I said, a group of four, and you can basically give your group commands of... Uh, so you're like Alpha Team and Bravo Team, I'm pretty sure. So you can like tell Team Bravo, which is the other two members, like move to this position. But like if you want them to be stealthy, you can be like stealth to this position. Or you can say attack to this position. You can say like fire at will. So they just light up anyone they see or they can hold their fire or, you know, that you can put them in prones, which is like laying on the ground or standing up out in the open and... There was a lot of different things you can do with this game. Really, really well-made video game. A lot of depth. I had the big box version as well, which came with the headset. Uh, so, yeah, you used to have a little headset that you would put on and a microphone where you could kind of... Here it is right here. Where you could speak... Oh, let's see. Right away there. Where you could kind of speak to your actual team... You put this thing on and you tell them, you'd be like, you know, you just, you just press the button on the thing to let you know you were talking and you'd be like, Team Bravo, attack to Charlie. And they do it. And like the voice recognition was actually pretty good. Like a few times they would be like, I can't do that. Or like, I don't understand what you're saying. But most of the time they actually understood what, what you were saying, which is, which is pretty impressive. And it definitely added uh, some new elements to the game. I think you could also like distract enemies by kind of like coughing or making noises and stuff and they could kind of hear that stuff and I'll put this away later and come and you know try to investigate it maybe that was in a different game I'm thinking of anyway the other games in the series SOCOM 2 which I have played through uh, I think three or four years ago all the way to the end again very challenging more of the same though and SOCOM 3 which I don't think I've played. So this is the final game that I got with my console, and that is The Simpsons Road Rage. I had a friend who played this, who had this game, just like any kid back in the, I guess, the early 2000s. I used to watch The Simpsons every night at six o'clock. I used to love watching The Simpsons, and this is kind of like a taxi simulation game of The Simpsons. As weird as that sounds, that doesn't sound fun at all, but this game used to be hella fun. You go around picking up different Simpsons characters and they would have conversations with you and react to what you were doing and it was all the original voice acting and if you're a fan of The, the Simpsons, this game was really, really fun. Sean White, Snowboarding. Samurai Warriors 2. Samurai Warriors Extreme Legends. Tiger Woods US Tour 2001 Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4 I have a lot of great memories with this game as well I didn't own it until I was maybe maybe like 6 years ago but yeah this is one of the earlier games I used to play at friends houses borrow from the the rental store as well a great skateboarding game still uh, I think it still holds up today there's probably better skateboarding games now Today, like the Skate series, but Tony Hawk, back in the day, was the shit. Tony Hawk, Proving Ground. Not a fan of that one. The Terminator 3 Redemption. Tekken Tag Tournament. X-Men Legends. This is a really good co-op game. Where it's kind of like one of the games, or oh, uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. That's the these were like the original games uh, before those games were made. So it's the same kind of thing. You have a squad of four X Men. You can pick who's in your squad, and you can upgrade all the all of them depending on the, the experience you get through the levels. There's collectibles, and yeah, it's a co-op game where you can have you can control any one of the X Men uh, at any different time. So you can just like. Hang on, Chris. 
see, so yeah, it has a pretty large cast of X-Men you can choose from, tons of different collectibles. You can pick and choose what X-Men you take in a battle. You can upgrade their skills, different abilities and stuff like that. And you can change between any of the four X-Men on the fly. And yeah, if you're playing co-op, I used to play co-op with friends or, you know, my sister or something like that. And we used to stay like, like, let's say my characters are Wolverine and Cyclops and her characters were like Nightwalker and Storm. So, you know, it, it used to be really cool like that. Definitely a really cool co-op game. There's also a sequel as well, which I've never played and I, I want to play, but I don't own it. Warriors Orochi. WWE Smackdown Shut Your Mouth, one of the earlier video games I got. I used to love creating my own characters in this game. I loved playing as Jeff Hardy. I loved playing as Stone Cold Steve Austin. There's a real motion video of, of wrestling matches and highlights and stuff like that. Uh, backstage matches, wrestling games used to be a hell of a lot of fun. I used to play this six player with the motion, with the, the what, are we, what, are the, what do you call it? The thing we used to have to plug it in to use six, you used to be able to use six different controllers. And yeah, six player um, tornado tag matches. They used to be insane, so much fun. Smackdown, WWE Smackdown versus Raw. Used to, it introduced the bra and panty match. Personal favorite of mine. WWE Smackdown vs. Raw 2007. I played the absolute hell out of this game. Loved the uh, graphic updates, the new wrestlers in this game. No Jeff Hardy in this game, but still there was some absolutely solid in inclusions in this game. And this really was when the, the, the wrestling game started to get really, really fun. And of course, the next game, WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2008, featuring ECW. So new ECW style matches and superstars like Sandman, Tommy Dreamer, Jeff Hardy's back in this game. You can do all sorts of things like rap, baseball bats in barbed wire, um, set tables on fire and body slam people through it. Absolute carnage. The elimination chambers in this game Love this game. Played this wrestling game possibly more than any of the other wrestling games that I have. And the final uh, set of games I have are all my Platinum games. So I'm going to go through these right now quickly. Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. I believe this is the game that introduced Tiny. Um, you can also play as Coco. So yeah, this is one of the better, one of the last real good uh, Crash Bandicoot platformer games. It's definitely really, really good though. Dragon Ball Z Budokai, really solid fighting game. This version has the Japanese audio only. I think the uh, European versions only had the Japanese audio, whereas the American versions, I believe, had the English dub audio as well. I don't know why that would be. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3, I put tons of hours into this. Vegeta was my favorite character to play as. I used to love playing through the red ribbon base mode where there was like, you could just go up on a, on a kind of like arcade tower sort of thing where you just fight, you know, enemies higher and higher and higher and level. And I don't think they were, it ever ended. I think it just kept going up and you kept leveling up until there was probably a level cap. So I just, I just used to play that and there was no real incentive to keep playing that um, other than to keep leveling up your character and like, so this game, uh, in this, oh, the campaign in this mode is so solid. The campaign in this game, so many different, um, options. Like the campaign in the first game was good. The campaign in the second game was rubbish. It was like this board game. The campaign in this game is one of the best, uh, op like the best compared to the anime, compared to the anime, this game it holds up so well. Like you can, you can fly around the whole world of DBZ and kind of visit different like locations. Like you can visit Kami's lookout. You can visit Goku's house, Goku's grandpa's house, all, all the different cities, uh, the mountains, the plains, you know, um, anywhere you want to go really that you can think of the world martial arts tournament, all these different places in the universe. You can fly around and different events are happening and you kind of use your chi, sensor or key or whatever it is sensor to sense people's power levels and you fly down to people and fight new opponents or like meet up with friends and stuff like that and you can find different skills and different like oh you can collect all the dragon balls you're gonna wish at the end of it 
There's so many great aspects to the campaign in this. Seriously, this this game is the best Dragon Ball Z game I've ever played. I haven't played any of the recent ones, like on the um, Xbox 360 or Xbox One or anything like that, but you can also, like, upgrade your characters in strength, in health, and in key, I want to say, like their, their power levels and stuff like that, and... Oh, this game used to be the best. The the, the power-ups in this game, it, it even include elements of Dragon Ball GT as well. You can go Super Saiyan 4 with Goku, and there was, I think, Super Saiyan 4 with Vegeta as well. There was all these great things in this game. And yeah, just playing as Vegeta, ripping people to shreds, using the Big Bang attack on the end of them. It was absolute chaos. It was so much fun. God of War 2, one of the best video games on the console... Uh, it took me a long time to think whether I like God of War 1 or God of War 2 better, but I definitely like God of War 2 better. There's just more to this game. Everything in the first game that was good, they built upon in this game, and they added new stuff in. The campaign in this is very, very fun, very, very solid. It, it maintains that kind of brutal aspect, and it maintains that puzzle, adventure, gameplay... The challenges in this game are some of the most challenging games I've ever played in any game ever. There's, I think it's in this game, or, or at least it might be in the first game, I'm pretty sure it's in this game. There's this part where you have to like scale 12 levels and you keep jumping up them and like the jumps alone are hard enough to make and then you start fighting like unreasonable enemies in these tiny amounts of of like land and if you get kicked off you die it's so freaking hard nice I, I would have tried this like 50 or more times seriously it took me a week just to do that one challenge super hard but a super uh fantastic game grand Auto san andre is the platinum version grand theft auto vice city stories i was very very happy when they released this game a prequel to Vice City. It takes uh, it takes obviously the series back to Vice City. It's really really well done. It's a port from the PSP, just like Liberty City Stories. Uh, more. Oh, I remember now. This this had this version where this had this um, thing where you used to be able to buy kind of different businesses or like oh no maybe you fought them against uh, other like you took them over from other gangs and it was kind of like this land kind of control thing that you used to. Gang members used to try and take it back from you, and there were certain businesses you could do, like you could get like prostitution rings and like money uh, extortion businesses and stuff like that. And you used to be able to like, I think like level them up or something, and and yeah, try to hold them back from rival gangs who would constantly try to take them back from you. Vice City Stories, hell of a lot of fun. Oh, the music in this game was so solid as well. Seriously, I loved the music in the Vice City, Vice City or Vice City Stories. This is more of more Vice City, so if you enjoy Vice City, definitely pick this game up on the PSP or the PS2. Jack and Daxter, the precursor. Legacy, very different to the first game. More uh, adventure-y. I love this game as much as the second and third game, but it is very, very different. Um, let's just say that. For one thing, Jack's a, the character Jack is a mute in this game. He doesn't talk at all. So Daxter is really the kind of the voice of uh, the character and kind of almost takes the role of the main character in this game but Jack and Daxter is very light-hearted very like old-school action platformer game so if you're into games like Crash Ban- not Crash Bandicoot if you're into games like Banjo-Kazooie definitely check out Jack and Daxter Jack 3 by the time this game came out the series had done a complete you know kind of turnaround from the first game this game is very dark and gritty compared to the first game it's out in a wasteland you're exiled from the city there's like all these there's there's these massive vehicles like monster trucks you can get and you can kind of like take them out in the wastes and and drive around and discover new things and this this game was so fun this is my favorite in the series the guns you can upgrade them like in crazy different ways again there's all sorts of collectibles new characters new villains there's a, oh, there's a whole friggin' new power-up system with dark eco. There's also light eco introduced in this game. This is one of the most, this is one of the best action-adventure platformer games on the, on the system. It's, 
It's open world sandbox, kind of like still like a child friendly Grand Theft Auto. Check out Jack 3. Even if you don't want to check out the other ones, check out Jack 3. That's the one I highly recommend the most. Lego Star Wars the video game. This covers the events of the new movies, the, the new trilogy. Not the new ones now, obviously, but the episode 1, 2, and 3. It's more of the same. I prefer the second one, but this one's definitely solid as well. Ratchet and Clank. This is the first one, and I played the first one before any of them, but I never owned it until uh, after I owned the second and third one. The first one has its flaws, but from from when it, it came out of nothing, essentially, and it's a brand new franchise, the first game is absolutely classic. I love this game. Really, really good action platformer. Um, a lot of different weapons you can get. A lot of different, you know, collectibles, awesome levels, awesome characters, awesome humor in this video game. And of course, there's Ratchet and Clank 2 Locked and Loaded. This one is the one that I got before any of the others. So this is the first Ratchet and Clank game that I fully played through. I used to love upgrading my, uh, upgrading my weapons, upgrading my armor, just getting all the different weapons, buying different, yeah, upgrades and, and stuff like that, finding all the different collectibles. This one was a massive step up from the second game. Highly recommend this one. Again, really fun characters and humor. But the best game in the trilogy was definitely Ratchet and Crank, <laughs> Ratchet and Clank 3 Up Your Arsenal. This game introduced uh, a new... A new spaceship that you used to be able to like take your spaceship around and upgrade your spaceship, upgrade your armor and your character to the point where you were just like invincible seriously by the end of it. Upgrade your weapons. Um, so many different weapons in this one. New gadgets as well. New storyline. This game brought it all together and really built upon the, the, the things that made the first two games great and just finessed the, the game, the series so much. And this game is just an absolute gem on the console. This is a joy to play. Definitely check out Ratchet & Clank 3 Up Your Arsenal. A platinum version of Ricky Ponting. The Sonic Mega Collection Plus. I got this to try and get into the old Sonic games, but I just couldn't get into them. Any, It's kind of like a compilation of all the great Sonic games. You know, it obviously has Sonic 1, 2, 3, Sonic & Knuckles, um, some Sega Game Gear games. It has a lot of games on this. I just couldn't get into them. And the final game I have to show off is Tekken 5. Tekken 5, I got a hell of a lot of playtime out of. I used to love playing the system where you used to upgrade your rank, upgrade your, your like, to Dan, 1, 2, 3, 5, whatever the hell. Uh, I used to love playing that just against the computer. I used to love playing the, <clears throat> the, the campaign mode of all the different characters, seeing all the different stories in a kind of comic book style animation. There was, oh, there was a little bloody side campaign where you play as Devil Jin or Jin, and it, it, it sucked ass, to be honest. It wasn't the best, but you fight against robots in this freaking robotic 3D world. It, it was not Tekken at all, but this game was really, really solid. Massive cast of characters. At the time, it was the largest uh, cast of characters ever that had been in a Tekken game. Definitely the one to own. 4 is really, really good as well. I played that back when I used to borrow it from the, the video store, but I never had it, but I got a lot of fun out of Tekken 5. Christy is my favorite character, and probably um, Steve is my favorite male character. So guys, that was my PlayStation 2 collection. If you watched it all the way to the end, thank you so much. If you like the video, leave a like. Be sure to subscribe for more collection videos, more videos on video games, anime videos, uh, check out my other videos on the channel, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.